Going on YouTube, Clover Bells here, back with another Scarlet Violet video, and today we're going to be covering an Iron Leafs team that just recently got rank 1 on the ladder, and it was done by a Japanese player called Ruto at Pokemon, and they released the open team sheet here, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at it and recreate it a little bit, uh, just because, you know, it is in Japanese, but we do have the English version of this squad. Now, they don't have the rental code, obviously, you know, they want to probably keep it a secret and use it elsewhere, but what we can do is uh, recreate it with our own EV spreads and based on what we think makes sense here, right? But everything else, we're going to keep the same. We're going to keep the Pokemon that they've chosen, uh, the moves, the Terras, the items, everything else will be the same as they have uh, on the screen over here. But what we're going to do is just you know, uh, add some EV spreads to it. So this way, um, you guys can also use it as well. <clears throat> and then you can also see how it's piloted because we're also going to showcase it in a couple games as well. I was using it. I was having a lot of fun with it, especially Iron Leaves. It's in an interesting spot right now in the meta, you know, just because of what it can do and what it can offer uh, to a Maridon team, right? And by the way, I just want to show the, the rank one tweet here, you know, just in case uh, there are some disbelievers in the chat here, but there it is. There is their proof of rank one. But, you know, Iron Leaves is, is a little bit picky you're, you're right. We, we know it can benefit with Maridon, right? And one way to really uh, mitigate Maridon's damage output is to change the terrain. Take away that electric terrain. So this way, it's not doing as much damage as it would normally do, right? Take away one of its multipliers. So one way to really do that is to use uh, an Indeedee or you use a Rillaboom. You know, Rillaboom at one point, you know, was at over 50% usage. And this is the reason why, because you want to be able to not only just remove Maridon's terrain, but have something that it can resist uh, its electric type attacks, right? But here's the thing with Iron Leaves. It, it actually benefits in all terrain. And that's crazy because, you know, if you want to change the terrain against Maridon, that just, you know, Iron Leaf says, okay, no problem. I can do well here as well. So we already know that you can do well in Electric Terrain because of Quark Drive. But then if you want to use the Indeedee, right, uh, the Indeedee will just boost its Psyblade damage, right? And Psyblade, you know, uh, again, it's a Psychic move, but it can still do more damage, right, under Psychic Terrain, which is actually kind of funny when you think about it. And then, of course, if you want to use Rillaboom and Grassy Terrain, then you can just boost its Leaf Blade damage, which is kind of funny, right? So you do well there. And then after that, you know, again, you do have Megahorn here, which is actually kind of funny. You know, just the fact that it has a, a bug type move. Um, but this is actually pretty cool because now you have something that can do big damage to both Rillaboom and Indeedee, right? Because they're both weak to bug. And, you know, it's not like a, a huge move pool here. But again, in terms of like raw damage output, the fact that this Megahorn, you know, it gets a, an attack boost because of Quark Drive is actually going to be pretty cool. And then Life Orb here. You know for a little bit more extra damage now that being said uh this is weak to you know intimidates from incineroar this is also weak to calyrex both calyrex is actually but what ruto at pokemon was able to decide was listen we're gonna make this thing terra normal and now we're not gonna be taking any astro barrage damage okay and then we're free to basically click leaf blades and side blades wherever uh we deem fit Right, so this is the idea behind the Iron Leaves, right? And what we're gonna do now is, we'll, again, like I said, we'll recreate this entire team, okay? And then afterwards, we'll showcase some EV spreads as to what we think would be best with this squad. And then, uh, you know, we'll showcase it in a couple games, all right? So let's get back to it. Okay, we've got all six Pokemon here on the Showdown Builder. So uh, we've already mentioned Iron Leaves. So let's go back here with Whimsicott. So of course, Whimsicott is a common partner on these Maridon teams. Of course, you're going to be going for Tailwind. Uh, the speed advantage is important for, you know, Maridon teams. You know, if you're going against Tornado stuff, uh, you want at least your own Prankster Pokemon. And Whimsicott is that Pokemon. Now, the cool thing about this Whimsicott set that Realtor was playing with was that it had Light Screen, right? So which is... Kind of cool in, in essence, right? Because look, you've got Incineroar here for Intimidate support. So that's your physical attack damage reduction. But for special uh, attack damage reduction, now you can add Light Screen to Whimsicott. Usually this third move is something like Encore or Helping Hand for that matter. Or even something like Cotton Spore, like what Grant used with his Reggie Dragozation team. But in this case, Light Screen has been done on Whimsicott before. This is not new. Okay, we've seen this um you know throughout different sets especially back in sword and shield close team sheets right so uh light screen not new and it makes sense on something like this and then here's the culver cloak item that they decided to go with uh as well as terra water here so culver cloak again you know no fake out for the opponent uh, whimsicott doesn't care for it and then at the same time you don't get any 
you know, drops, something like icy wind speed drops and, and that kind of thing. So that's or bleak wind storm, right? So that's going to be important. And I would imagine this is like a bulkier whimsicott where, yes, you do have speed, but of course, you're going to invest a little bit more in some of your HP, maybe in, even in like defense or special defense. And we'll give you some ideas for that uh, when the time comes later in the video. But moving on here, uh, you know, the, again, the Terra Water, of course, uh, you, you remove your, your flying weakness, you resist fire type damage, pretty straightforward uh, with the Whimsicott there. But right on here, so again, the main thing is Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam was uh, something that is being used a little bit more lately. Maridons are going for this, uh, you know, Fairy Terra just to win the mirror matchup, right? Because if you're going against another Maridon, uh, you don't want to be taking a Draco Meteor, right? So what you can do is make it whiff, and then at the same time, you know, KO them right back with your own Fairy type move in Dazzling Green. So we're going to give up the Discharge here, which makes a lot of sense, right? You don't need Discharge here. There's no ground types here, okay? And we don't have any ground Terras anyway, so it was just an easy choice to give that up while still keeping Electro Drift, of course, still keeping your other big dragon nuke in Draco Meteor, and then your pivot move in Volt Switch, just in case they, you know, they do change your terrain, or if you want to get out of a situation where it's just not so favorable. But, you know, other than that, the other three moves are pretty standard. And But this is the Rising Maridon set as of late, you know, Dazzling Gleam, Terra Fairy, and I expect us to see this as we head into the World Championships. Of course, right? So now we go into Urshifu here. Uh, it was a Focus Sash Urshifu set. Right, which is good because now if Raging Bolts want to click, you know, uh, a, a, a Protosynthesis boosted Thunderclap, now at least we get to have the Sash and get off one Surging Strikes or Close Combat if we need to. They also have, quad, you know, Priority Aqua Jet, and then it was uh, just Terra Water just for a little bit of damage, right? Then the Iron Leaves, like we said, we talked about this, something that can do well in all three terrains, right? And then Terra Normal, that's for your Shadow Rider matchup, which is really, really smart when you think about it. That also gets rid of your ice weakness, your flying weakness, your fire weakness, <laughs> right? Your ghost, you know, like we already talked about your ghost stuff, your dark weakness, right? Normal typing is, is quite good uh, right now in, in this format. And it's cool to see this kind of Terra on the Iron Leaves. I think it makes sense. It's pretty smart. Uh, and then over here, the Incineroar, it was an Assault Vest Incineroar set, right? And that means there's no parting shot, but instead it's going to be U-turn for your pivot move, right? So you've got Volt Switch here and you've got U-turn here. So you've got some pivot potential uh, with this squad here. And, you know, other than that, it's pretty straightforward as well. Uh, the, it's Fake Out, you know, Flare Blitz, and of course, Knock Off, you know, your dark move that you can use to pressure other Ghost types, other Calyrex. Uh, even remove clear amulets from something like a sh uh, an Ice Rider, for example. Um, but this is pretty standard uh, from Incineroar. And it was Terra Ghost, of course, just so that, you know, you get to force the opponent to whiff their fighting moves. Imagine Zamazenta going for body presses or close combats from Urshifu or Mian Chao. You know, this is why you have that Terra Ghost option. And now with the Assault Vest, what you can do now is just basically survive the Maridon moves, right? Uh, an opposing Maridon. And then just sit, literally sit in front of the Calyrex, not care at all because you're already a dark type, so you were already resisting stuff as it is, but now you just add an Assault Vest and now you're just kind of chilling. So in that sense, it's pretty good. Uh, you're super bulky now, which is quite nice. And you know, you've got the physical attack damage reduction. Now you've got the Assault Vest to care of the special end. You also add the fact that you have light skin on Whimsicott. So this Incineroar actually becomes hard to remove, right? Now, the, the, the other key Pokemon on this team was the Iron Hands. Yes, we know that uh, it gets the Quark Drive boost from Maridon, of course, but this was Electric Seed um, Iron Hands, which is kind of funny when you think about it. You're getting a defense boost here, um, you know, with the Maridon on board, which is quite nice. So now what this allows you to do is sit in front of the Ice Riders that want to click high horsepower, and now you don't really care about it so much because you have the defense boost with the Iron Hands, right? So that's cool. But there's no fake out on this Iron Hands, believe it or not. It was Drain Punch, and it was Thunder Punch too. So no Wild Charge, no uh, recoil damage, but instead it was Swords Dance and Protect. And that is pretty, pretty interesting. Along with the Terra Fairy option, even more interesting than that. But now what this allows you to do is lead stuff like Incineroar Iron Hands. You know, go for Fake Out, go for Swords Dance. And then potentially pivot out the instant into the Maridon here and then activate the electric seed. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're going to get an attack boost. You're going to get a defense boost, 
Okay, and then you have terrain available to you. So, you know, all in all, this is a pretty smart Iron Hand set. I like this a lot. Now, what this allows you to also do is because it's Swords Dance, uh, you can take away from some of its attack and invest more in its HP and its bulk stats. Uh, and which is smart because you want the Iron Hands to stay on the field for a little bit longer. Because, you know, once you get those Swords Dance up, even if you're taking some damage, right, the Drain Punch will just heal you right back because you're dealing more damage with it. And when you do more damage, you're just going to heal even more back, right? So that's pretty cool uh, in terms of this Iron Hand set here. Terra Fairy is also pretty interesting. Again, you, you're removing your ground weakness. You're removing your psychic weakness. Uh, and, you're, of course, your fairy weakness is just... All of it is just neutral now. Terra Fairy uh, becomes a pretty interesting yet solid uh, defensive typing when you think about it, right? But this is the team, right? I just want to double check just to make sure we recreated it correctly. And I think we did here, right? With all the Terra options. So, um, but yeah, just to look at uh, the, the team itself. So this is an interesting Firewater Grass Core, right? You've got Incineroar, Iron Leads, uh, uh, Iron Leaves, and Urshifu, right? There's your physical Firewater Grass Core. Uh, and again, you could do a lot of different things like Instant Urshifu Leads, Fake Out Surging Strikes, is always a play that you can make. Uh, you know, the Incineroar Iron Leaves is also another thing you can consider. Uh, you know, just have some fake out damage with, with um, you know, stab moves all together. That's also a play you can make. Uh, even uh, the Maridon Whimsicali, the hyper offensive mode, where you're just literally clicking Tailwind and nuking something. You could do it like that. You could do Whimsicott Iron Leaves with Maridon in the back. Lots of different things you could do uh, with this kind of squad here. Uh, but I like that it was playable into pretty much a lot of different matchups. You always had something. I never felt like I was outplayed. Okay, I won a lot of games with this team. And I want to showcase some of them just so that you can see how it plays. And just see how good Iron Leaves and Iron Hands were. Especially these sets. Okay, along with the fact that Incineroar was really, really good in, in what it could do. Right, so um, now let's just go into the EV spreads. And let's give some general ideas and what you could do with this kind of squad in terms of spreads. Okay, so starting with Whimsicott here, so basically we're going to put some bulk on this thing, but I still want to have the fastest Whimsicott available. So we're still going to go Timid and, and still go Timid 252, but we're going to put some bulk on this thing. And what I decided to do was go to 172 Investment and also 4 Defense here. And what this does is it's calc for not only just Urshifu Surging Strikes, uh, but also Chan Pao stuff. So if I show you this damage calc over here, this is Jolly Chan Pao. Uh, with Ice Spinner after Intimidate minus one from Incineroar. And you can live that, right? And that's kind of funny if you can live that. So that's one kind of calc in essence. And I will show the Urshifu here just so that you can see it. And it's also like, it's a Mystic Water Urshifu, right? So imagine uh, 252 Urshifu, right? So there's that. Then you add Terra Water here. That's not killing. Then you add Sword of Ruin and that's still not killing. So the fact that this Whimsicott can live Terra Water mystic water 252 adamants uh, you know with with sort of rune on the field okay the fact that you can sit in front of this thing and still live is kind of funny when you think about it so i think i thought those were like the two main calcs that you could have there then after that you just want one point in special attack and just dump the rest here into special defense um you know it's pretty much equal value now with defense and sped f and it's fine because we don't need our whimsicott to do damage we just needed to sit on the field and click tailwind and light screen uh, and the occasional Moonblast, right? So we can just dump the leftovers there in Special Defense. Maridon, I'm just going to go with like our Timid set here, which basically means we get to outspeed every single max speed modest Maridon. And you need 188 for that. I like to go one more because other Maridons are going to be doing that as well. So I like to go 189. And it's just for the Speed Creep War. Just max it Special Attack like this, put one point in the bulk, and then just dump the rest into HP like this. And this is already like pretty solid. Right, the Urshifu here, this is the, I, in my opinion, the easiest one. It's the Sash set. So you can just easily go 252, 252, even Adam in Nature here. You know, you have the Tailwind support, so you're fine there. Now, the Iron Leaves. So what's cool about the Iron Leaves is when you go Jolly, okay, you can outspeed base 100, something like a Chiyu, right? So what you can do is just go up to 168, right, like this. But let's go one more and let's go to 169, right? So... Um, then from there, a little bit of HP here for Life Orb optimization, right? Because again, you're taking one tenth of your damage, so you always want to end in a nine when you have this Life Orb item just to re-optimize your HP a little bit. Just one point in the bulk, and then just dump the rest here into attack stat. You will uh, have the attack stat, you know, when Corp Tribe is active, you know, because again, you have a, a higher attacking stat here. But 
this is pretty cool, right? Because you're gonna have the attack stat, you're gonna have Tailwind support, you're jolly natured. So, you know, Iron Lee's gonna do some damage. Of course, Incineroar is something that you're gonna wa need to watch out for, but, you know, Incineroar is gonna have to deal with Urshifu and a Swords Dance Iron Hands when you think about it, right? So you're kind of okay in that sense. Um, our instant here, so here's the thing, historically, you can go adamant with the Assault Vest here, but what's actually pre uh, a little bit better, I, 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 at least I think in this generation, is to just go like an Impus defensive nature with the instant, right? So it gets to stay on the field and keeps pivoting, keeps cycling, and keeps dealing this chip damage over time, right? So we're going to go with Impish here, but um, what we're going to also end up doing is surviving stuff like Urshifu Searching Strikes, which I can show you in a second, which is kind of funny when you think about it. It's going to be 228 HP, okay? And all you really need is this 188 defense mark, all right? And that's the calc that we're looking for. Then a little bit of speed, obviously, you know, after Talon, we get to outspeed of something like a Chiyu. Um, one point in the attacking stat and just stuff the rest here into special defense. Again, with the spit def here, you know, you get a nice solid even number um, that you can use uh, or, or just rely on because, you know, with the Assault Vest, 1.5 boost, you don't want an odd number here because then this becomes a decimal. And when you have a decimal, it rounds down. So to avoid that, we always want this solid even number uh, with the Assault Vest here. So we've got that there. Um, and then again, just to show you um, the instant stuff, uh, I'm just going to put this over here, like just to show you like Maridon calcs here. So this is Maridon going for Electro Drift here with our Incineroar set. Again, it's a modest 252 choice specs, Terra Fairy with Electric Terrain. Um, actually, we don't even need the Terra Fairy, but look at this, like Electro Drift, we, get to, we actually get to live this, okay? So, you know, the fact that you have this option available to you uh, to survive an Electro Drift is kind of funny, right? Then we'll just show the Urshifu here. Um, so you might think you probably just died to Surging Strikes. You do, but it depends on their EV set. So I'm gonna show you um adamant 156 okay which is a common spread that instance uh urshifus go for look at that you actually live adamant 156 surging strikes and if you're an urshifu player you're like oh my goodness how did that not kill this instant well uh the bulk here was quite nice there and, and when you think about it right so um if you can live that that's good now again this is a non-mystic water urshifu if this is choice scarf right so if you do die that means uh he does have more than 156 investment and in a best of three tournament that's actually good information for you right so uh i i think that calc in itself is is quite good and we already mentioned the speed tier just being able to outspeed base 100s after a tailwind all right now we go into the iron hands here so normally i would just go like adamant 156 right to the ev bump here but i'm gonna drop it to the first bump instead and just go adamant 76 okay and again if you're trying to play competitive bulk bump and get better at um, building teams and creating EV spreads, make sure you know what EV bumps are. And if you don't, comment below asking what are EV bumps and I will reply to you because if you really want to get better at building the squads and you know knowing how to intrinsically create these spreads like what I'm doing, you gotta know what bumps are. They're very fundamental. So comment what are EV bumps and I will reply to you and I'll explain it to you. Okay, but we'll go to the first bump here, Adamant76. And the reason for that is because again, we're compensating for Swords Dance. So we don't need to overkill. I'd rather just invest in our bulk, something like this, right? You know, just max special defense, which is what you do anyway when you have a, uh, an assault vest. You don't have that anymore, but you do have light screen whimsicon, which is kind of like an assault vest, right? So, you know, there's your compensation there. Just one point in speed. So this way, you know, we can be a little bit fast in trick room, right? You know, Calyrex Ice Rider, that speed ties with us. You know, stuff like King Gambit and then Blood Moon or Saluna, of course, has base 52 speed. So you kind of want to pay attention to some of those speed tiers um, when it comes out, down to it, you know, whether you're in Trickham or outside of it. So just keep that in mind. But then from here, I just went 164 HP. Okay, and then just, just dumped the rest here into defense about 12 there, right? Oh, that's not 164, that's 116. Yeah, something like this, right? So I wanted to, you know, I've thought about just putting one point here, but I wanted, again, another even number for that the electric seed boost here so uh i just put it to 12 points there and then literally the leftovers just went into hp like this right so um if you want you can take a little bit more off right and then you can just do this instead right and go to the second benchmark anyway but i kind of like a little bit more bulk on this iron hands just because i do have the swords dance available to me so a little bit more hp you know does go a long way we're not at diminishing returns uh at, at this point so I think it still benefits the Iron Hands here. So um, now we, I think we've got our set. So yeah, let's put this on the screen here. And again, I was just going for basic general stuff. 
So this way I can get on the ladder and start testing it and start playing with it and see how it feels. But I feel like these were reasonable calcs uh, to start with in terms of testing something and see how a team plays. All right, so I've got some games saved. So we're gonna take a look at it and see how the team plays. Uh, and then we'll do some, you know, last minute final conclusions at the end of the video as we always do. All right, so let's take a look at these games. Okay, this is a pretty good match to show. So this is the winning team from the first Victory Road Honolulu Challenge, right? Federico's team. Again, we did a whole video uh, on that tournament. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you go back a couple videos and take a look at that. But I know this team well. Uh, so the key here is managing the trick room and of course uh, making sure our iron hands uh, deals enough damage uh, to outpace a lot of these mods here. So um, because if you look at it, right, you know, if he clicks trick room, iron hands is going to outspeed everything not named Calyrex, which is great for us because once we set up that sword stance in the opening turns, then we're going to be fine the rest of the way. We just have to outlast this uh, Calyrex trick room stuff. So um, I'm going to go with instant here and iron hands just in case he does the um, Ogre Pond, Rillaboom, or even like Furigraph stuff. So Instant was always a good lead here no matter what. Uh, and we get to intimidate the Ogre Pond too, right? So I do want to fake out the Calyrex here. And he doesn't even click Protect. He wants to set up that Trick Room. He goes for IG, IV Culture. That doesn't do that much damage because we intimidated him and we're in Impish. And now we get the Story Zans up. So our Iron Hands is looking good right now. There's the Follow Me. I'm going for U-Turn. I want to save the Instant for later. I don't want it to die just yet. I'd rather just give him the Ursh ideally, but... Um, you know, of course, I do get to go for my Drain Punch and the Calyx goes for Trick Room. That's fine. So now Raging Bolt comes in, but that's okay because we have Protect on this Urshifu. You know, we can bait the, the Raging Bolt here. He goes for Glacial Lance. That's okay. Um, and we get to recover it anyway with Drain Punch. Look how much that's doing to Raging Bolt. That's great damage. He goes for Thunderbolt there. You know, no need to go for Thunderclap because he's faster in Trick Room. He goes into Rillaboom here. That's fine. I'm going to go back into Incine here just in case. Um, just to cover for that. He goes for Glacial Lance, Instant takes it like a champ. And again, we're drain punching and we're recovering a lot of health. Like we're getting a lot of value out of Iron Hands here than the Calyrex is himself. So he's got Trick Room here, but he's not picking up any KOs. And that's what we want here. And here's another fake out. Again, stalling another turn of Trick Room. And it's a free kill onto the Rillaboom. The Rillaboom literally came in and did nothing except keep my Iron Hands at full health, right? And now Trick Room turns are now down to one, right? Mirada looking really good in the end game. He protects Raging Bolt this turn. That's a smart play. He goes for high horsepower. That's not enough at all, all right? I don't get the kill, obviously, in game Raging Bolt, but I do get to knock off the clear amulet at least and chip it for decent damage for my Urshifu or Mirada to clean up in the end game, right? So um, I'm going to go into Mirada on here um, because I want to save the instant. I want to get my Iron Hands that defense boost. Okay, now he does go for the Draco Meteor instead. So unfortunately, I do get this read wrong, which is fine. But he doesn't go for Trick Room. He instead go goes for a high horsepower, right? So that uh, ends up being an interesting play. Thunderclap never picks up from that range. Uh, always, you know, he's minus two anyway. But Maradon's just able to clean up here. And then Urshifu, of course, just picks up here uh, with Searching Strike. So again, we got a lot of good value out of the Iron Hands. I did get that one, that one late turn wrong, but... Um, you saw what it was doing under Trick Room, so it does give this team a lot of trouble if you do run into Federico's team. So as long as you can position the Incident and the Iron Hands correctly, uh, you should be in a pretty good spot. Okay, good. This is a Calyrex Shadow Rider game with Indeedy, right? So remember what we said about Indeedy uh, wanting to come to these Maridon games because you want to be able to change Maridon's terrain and mitigate its damage. But that's going to be good for our Iron Leaves because we're going to get boosted Side Blades anyway. And at the same time, we do have Terra Normal uh, available to us. Uh, so this way we can not have to take super effective damage from Astro Barrage, right? So once again, uh, we will go for that player. Okay, so here's the Calyrex and Didi. As expected, I'm going to keep Maridon in the back. I'm not going to lead a turn one and have him change my terrain. But instead, have him give my Iron Leaves terrain, uh, which is good, right? So I want to force this Terra here, just in case. So he goes for Terra Fighting Calyrex, which is interesting enough. Uh, but I'm going to protect the Iron Leaves this turn. I'm going to make him believe that, you know, I don't have it, right? But of course, this is not going to work in, you know, best three. But either way, I still play the same way. I just want to remove the key item on the Calyx. It was Covert Cloak here. Um, and now I go for the Terra Normal, right? So he's he's being greedy here. He thinks he can pick up this KO on the Iron Leaves. Uh, but of course, and then we have AV Instant, which doesn't really care, right? And then there's the Side Blades. Goodbye, Calyrex, okay? And I probably should have clicked U-Turn here, but I went for Knockoff anyway, just in case, right? So... Um, there's the Chiyu. So at this point, 
Um, Iron Leaves has done its job. So even if I were to lose it here, it's okay. Because look, I picked up two KOs here. Indeed, and Calyx went down. Chiyu is still on the field here. But again, we've got a Maridon in the back. Okay. And this is a Life Orb Chiyu, which means it's not Scarf. Okay. So that's important. Because now that means, you know, I don't have to do anything crazy uh, with my Maridon here. I go for Tailwind anyway. I probably should have just clicked Moonblast regardless. So this is also another misplay by me. But either way, Electro Drift always picks up this Chiyu uh, because, again, it's not Scarf, so you didn't need to outspeed me. But um, in, in, in that case, again, a more optimal play is just to go for the Moonblast. No need for the Tailwind and then just kill uh, with the Electro Drift like we did there. But again, you got to see the value of the Iron Leaves again. You know, it's his, it's kind of his fault for going for Terra Fighting Calyrex. I understand it, of course, it, you know, Dark Resist uh, at the end of the day, but um you know side blades just picks you up like that and honestly it was still okay because i was terra normal and there wasn't really anything he could do to touch the iron leaves i was chipping away at him and he he can't really do any damage with that kind of lead at that point so um there's some good value there with that iron leaf set okay this one is a um Terrapicos game and again this is something where iron hands is going to be important because again we do have that fighting move uh that's going to be good uh, against the Terrapicos here. And, you know, Urshifu does look somewhat interesting just because there is Terrapicos and Blow Moon Ursa Luna. But uh, at the end of the day, I still want to be able to position my uh, Maridon carefully. Now, the thing that about this player is that he's got two terrains. I never liked that. You know, he's got Indeedee and Rillaboom, but um, that's still fine by me. Okay, so here's the Indeedee, and here is the Alchemy, interestingly enough. I don't quite understand that lead. But he let it anyway, and here's the Iron Leaves yet again. Now, we do have Mega Horn here available to us, um, but I wanted to just kind of play greedy a little bit here. And he protects the Alchemy, which is kind of smart. So, you know, and then he got up his Trick Room. But, so, that kind of helps him. He goes to Terrapicos here, which is interesting, right? He gets the Terra Shift, and now he's just going to go for these Decorate plays, I would imagine, right? And he does, so it's, now it's plus two. Um, and, of course, Mega Horn, not going to be able to pick up the NDD now because it's a Terrapicos. So... I get turn one and almost turn two wrong, right? We do get one drop there with Moonblast, so that's nice. And Travagos is tripped a lot. And under Trick Room, our Iron Hands is going to have a field day. So I just want to get up Light Screen now. And he also gets up his Light Screen. Iron Leaves survives. And we get up more Leaf Blade damage. I probably should have just went for the Alchemy anyway and let Iron Hands do the job. But now I'm just letting him kill the Whimsicott so I can get the free switch into the Iron Hands here. Uh, for this last turn of Trick Room, right? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, he goes back into Indeedee, probably thinking Fake Out, but why would I do that when I have Trick Room up, right? So we get to remove the Terrapicos here, okay? And Leaf Blade dealing pretty good damage into the DD, um, all things considered, right? So Terrain's back to normal. Ursaluna comes in. Um, he goes into the Alchemy yet again. Another KO for the Iron Leaves, which is kind of cool. And then Iron Hands, a little bit of chip into the Alchemy, but again... You know, he's got his Restricted Gun, his Redirector's Gun. It's just Alchemy and Ursa Luna. We're still okay here. You know, we just pick up the Alchemy from here. Um, and it doesn't really matter what this Ursa Luna does, whether it's Earth Power or something. We have the Light Screen up. We're fine. Iron Hands is just free to finish off this game. You know, Blood, of course, that's not doing enough damage. And our opponent has just no choice here uh, but to pretty much surrender uh, because he's lost everything. And it's just a two-on-one at this point. And that's exactly what happens. Okay, this is another one of those weird Calyrex Ice Rider teams. There is another Ndidi there. Um, now, I want to also lead Ince into this, but I, it's a little tricky because there is the King Gambit there, and I don't want to boost that thing any more than it does, and uh, than it is already. Now, yes, I, I am a fire type. I do have Flare Blitz. I can always just Flare Blitz it even if he does lead it, uh, but there's still some other complications, uh, you know, what, just, just looking at what he has here. But... I still think Iron Hands looks great here. He's got a Porygon, he's got an Instant, he's got a King Gambit, um, and he's got even a Blood Moon or Saloon. He's got four fighting type weaknesses, which is kind of funny. Um, so as long as I can keep the Iron Hands alive, then I, I should be okay. And I, I should just need to stall out this Trick Room if he does go for it. So um, I'm going to go with Urshifu, actually, just in case he does go with Instant or King Gambit, or even Porygon there, another fighting type. There's the Indeedee Callus. That's okay. So if he wants the Trick Room now, then I'm okay with it, right? Because again, Iron Hands and Calyx, they have um, almost a speed tie here. So I kind of want to just deal some chip damage already into the Ndidi, you know, just in case the Calyrex uh, or the Ndidi did not go for follow me. And here's my Swords Dance play. There's the Trick Room. That's okay. Okay, another follow me. Okay, 
and high horsepower does a lot but it's not boosted right so we can recover a little bit more just kill the indeedy and then again this is good surging strike chip this is going to be you know within ko range of maridon as long as we stall out this trick room here here's the blood moon so it's a little bit interesting i want to just protect here there's the glacial lance obviously we're going to live um and he goes for hyper voice instead looking to try and pick up but he doesn't and what's interesting enough here is that this Ursaluna actually lives my Surging Shrike. So good <laughs> on the Ursaluna for living that. I didn't expect that. But he switches out into Porygon here. Why he does that, I'm not quite sure. I'm going into Maridon here already. Um, and again, just to give the Iron Hands a defense boost. And we do live. So there's the value of the Electric Seed. And now we just completely remove the Calyrex there. That's why I did that. You know, I, I was willing to give up the Maridon at that point because I wanted to let Urshifu finish off the game uh, once Trick Room was dead. And I also still have Iron Leaf, so I was totally fine uh, with giving up the Maridon at that point. Um, but now he clicks Hyper Beam. All right, this is a this is one of those weird teams. So, you know, there's the Ursaluna going for normal. I just Leaf Blade it, we're faster. And Drain Punch here just pretty much removes the Porygon. Uh, there's not really much you can really do about it. I'm plus two. And, you know, it's just a, a funny kind of team that he's got. But look, again, the value of Iron Hands here, uh, he could not finish it, okay? And Iron Hands looks great in front of a Calyrex. Um, and, you know, you can outpace the Incineroars because you have the Swords Dance available to you. Um, and then at the same time, even though you do take some chip damage, uh, it's okay because you can just heal it right back with those harder hitting Drain Punches like we mentioned. All right, so there you have it. So there's the there's our rendition of the rank one squad. Um, so let me know what you think of the squad. Let me know what you think of these Terra types, Terra Normal Iron Leaves, Terra Fairy Iron Hands, uh, Assault Vest Incineroar, of course, and Terra Fairy uh, Maridon with Dazzling and Gleam, right? And of course, Light Screen Whimsicott. I think it's a smart team. Uh, you know, just the way it was constructed. I like the options that it has. And it really brings out... Iron leaves its full potential, especially given where we are in the format. Again, like we mentioned, there's so much Rillaboom, there's so much Indeedee running around, and Iron Leaves doesn't really care about those options. It does well against both of those things. And even though you do or you are weak to stuff like Calyrex, both Calyrexes, you have the Terra Normal available to you. Uh, and then at the same time, Mega Horn is gonna do tons of damage, not just to Rillaboom and Indeedees, but also the Ice Rider in itself, because again, it is a psychic type. And they don't want to be taking bug damage in the grand scheme of things, right? So um, that being said, um, let me know what you think of the squad. And, you know, again, free team, <laughs> right? And if, if, of course, you're trying to build your own team and you need a little bit of help, feel free to subscribe uh, to the channel with that tier three sub. It's a team building sub. Uh, and then from there, you know, we get to build you a squad the way you want it built. If you need it for, you know, those premier challenges or mid-season challenges, I'm still calling it by those names. Uh, you know, whatever the new name they call it, you know, the league challenges, whatever it is, you know, if you need it for some tournament of some sort, we've got you covered. Tier 3 sub is all it takes. If you check the video description below or in the pinned comment section, there is a link to join the channel uh, for that tier 3 sub. And then from there, you can message me on Discord. You can join the Discord, uh, which is also linked in the video description. And then uh, we'll organize a time to meet and get you a squad that you need uh, for whatever it is you need for. All right. But that's it for now, folks. We'll be back with another video in the next one. Peace out and have a good one.